On Friday, June 26, the World Council of Arameans, WCA, organized their site event at the UN in Geneva in connection with the Universal Periodic Review of the State of Turkey by the United Nations that took place the same day. During the event, the organizers introduced a new documentary entitled SAFO, A Forgotten Genocide. And it, it was well received, we can say. And nowadays it, it will be... Uh, it will go into premiere in a number of countries, in Germany already, uh, in a few days in Sweden as well. And we are glad here to show you all at the United Nations the untold story of the Aramean people. Southeast Turkey. This is where, in 1915, and under the Turkish regime, a mass killing started that is known as the Armenian Genocide. But almost unknown is that in these villages, about 100 kilometers south of where the Armenians lived, Another small people was massacred. Not the Armenians, but the Arameans. When we in the West were still in the darkest prehistoric days, the ancestors of these people were already into astronomy, philosophy, and poetry. With their own rich language and culture, they influenced the entire Middle East. And even Jesus spoke their language. These remarkable people are known as the Arameans, I can show you manuscripts going back to the 4th and 5th century showing that the southeast of Turkey, northeast of Syria and Syria as well, and Iraq was populated and inhabited, inhabited by the Aramean people. And the Arabic script, the way they write Arabic, it's derived from one of the Aramaic dialects. So that's also something to take pride in as an Aramean. And we all always heard those stories, but we could never grasp the very notion of so many of our own brothers and sisters, parents, grandparents, who were brutally killed. And just think one second that each single one of us who is sitting here right now is lucky. Lucky that your grandfather or great-grandfather or your great-grandmother was able one way or another to survive the systematic destruction of our people. That's why you and I are sitting here today. After watching the documentary, some event visitors had questions. From the perspective of the Aramean people, how do you articulate a political position? Because you're facing a very serious situation, and that's extremely serious. And that needs to be highlighted in the world media, you know? Um, it's very difficult for us to articulate a position uh, without offending any existing member state, of course, obviously, because um, we want to survive unless the present governments in Syria, Turkey, Iraq, and Lebanon, where we are indigenous to, would tell us, again, like, um, you can have some sort of autonomy. You know, that would be, for example, uh, a solution, that we can regulate our own administration, our own affairs, and, and in, in that sense also manage to survive. Having said that, we desire a constructive dialogue with the Turkish government, and we also realize that it takes time but we always try our best to, to reach out to our Turkish friends and always try to touch their hearts and try to reason with them and try to explain them why it is important for us today, 100 years later, that this genocide is being acknowledged. Um, since we have the discussion right now, the public discussion about the genocide, about the recognition about the genocide 100 years ago, there is a new debate, there's even a new acceptance of taking in the information and spread them. So this is actually where we are jumping on the train, as you can say, and try to try to give information where we can, because this is what, what people want to hear. They want to hear or they want to get the information from people who are involved or have been involved in the process. And this is what we are working for. In spite of being ignored, criticized, accused and often being silenced, Johnny Meso, the president of WCA, keeps his positive attitude. He is a man with a vocation. When we are asking for our cultural rights, our linguistic rights, our economic rights, or even our political rights, we're asking something that is um, lawfully ensured. I mean, according to international law, you're entitled to self-determination. You have the right as a community, as a people, to uh, write your own destiny. Now, if we look at the situation of the Christians, their destiny is being written by foreigners, by outsiders. And what we want as a people, we want to have the right to our own resources, our natural resources, all our resources. We want to have access to our buildings, to our monasteries, our churches, and we want to have control over them. It's a right that exists for almost 100 years now, I think, in international law. 
and you see it in all documents. You have different declarations at the United Nations, the European Union, the Council of Europe. They have different mechanisms, different instruments um, for minorities, for indigenous peoples. And everywhere you see that uh, these groups uh, are entitled to preserve their identity. And in the end, they're also entitled to write their own future, their own destiny.